Hello, wonderful students. Today we're going to be working through the assignment experimental design variable identification. Uh, most likely you already learned this information by doing the um, that paper airplane lab because that's a lot of times how we introduce these concepts to students. Uh, so with that, you need to make sure that you remember those definitions for how we do each of these things. So the simplest way that um, we can recap on this is to remember simplest definition I can give for an independent variable is what the researcher changes. So going back to that paper airplane activity, hopefully you've done that. And I say researcher because right, we're doing science in here. You're the researcher. You're seeing what changes. Um, you're doing research on something. So what the researcher changes is the keyword. So going back to that paper airplane example, if you watch my other video lesson, we had the regular plane, and then we took that plane after we just did some experimentation, and we took a stapler and just added a bunch of staplers to it. So the independent variable then was the staples. That's the thing that we changed from one to the next. Um, then we have the dependent variable is going to be what the researcher measures. And so keyword on this is measures. So what are you looking for a change in? Hence why it's dependent. It's dependent on your independent variable. So in this case, and I can actually add these on here. So I can add this side note that the, you know, like our staples from the paper airplane activity. So what did we measure for a change in, in that um, paper airplane activity? Well, we measured for a change in distance. So distance in this case would have been our dependent variable. Constants, oh boy, there's a lot of them that we could have come up with. Um, I'm only gonna list the ones that I put um, in the video and actually, um, oh, I guess this is just a definition, Never mind. Um, so a constant is things that don't change. Or things that you keep the same. So again, going back to that paper airplane one, we need to keep as many things as possible the same. I wanted to throw at the same power, I wanted to throw at the same angle, I needed to use the same plane, I wanted to start from the same spot, I wanted my air within the room to be the same. Um, realistically, are you always gonna hold these things constant? No, but we still want to do the best that we can to control all of those. And then how many constants should each experiment have? I know a lot of times I say, like in that lab, I think I say list at least five. Reality is you want as many as possible. Remember, if, when we do this in class, we can usually come up with like 14. Like even air temperature will make a difference in how a plane flies. And then control group is tough for students, but a definition for control group, um, I would say best definition would be what you compare to And then a lot of times I like to kind of call it the, what's the normal of something? What's the regular? So going back to that paper airplane activity, you know, we're going to take our stapled paper airplane and we're going to compare that to just a regular plane, plane paper airplane. So that would be our, the plane airplane would be our, our normal, if you will. And so I can add that in here, um, the regular paper airplane. So now continuing on, this assignment is just gonna give us four other experiments, right? Not everything is about paper airplanes. So directions in the four experiments below, identify the independent variable, dependent variable, constants, and control group. And please note, one of the experiments will not have a control group. As great as it always is to have something to compare results to, the reality is, is not every experiment is going to have a really good control group. And that's okay. You should always have an independent variable, right? The one thing that you change, a dependent variable, what you're measuring, so like the purpose of the experiment, and then you should always have as many constants as you can. So biggest mistake students make in this assignment is they try and just list one constant and be done. 
you can't do that. You need as many constants as possible. And I promise in all these experiments, there's at least a few constants listed. And there's probably ones that aren't even mentioned in here. So reading through this, Gloria wants to find out if the color of food would affect whether kindergartners would select it for lunch. So she puts food coloring in four identical bowls of mashed potatoes. So they have regular potatoes, red, green, yellow, and blue. So I guess five bowls. Um, each child received the same size scoop of potatoes of their color choice. Gloria did this um, using 100 kindergartners. She recorded the number of students that each chose. So going back to her definitions, what is it that the researcher is changing? What's our independent variable? Well, in this case, um, what I would always encourage you to do with these videos, if you're not, you should pause right now, try and answer all four of these on your own, and then hit play um, and see how you did. Or you could even fast forward, check your answers. If you're good, move on. If you got them incorrect, then kind of come back to this point and listen to the experiments or the explanations. So independent variable. What is it that the researcher is changing? In this case, she is changing color of potatoes. She's going to see if that makes a difference in the kindergartners choosing it. And that's actually what's that she recorded, right, what she measures. So dependent variables, what the researcher measures, measures. So she records or measures the number of students that choose that color. So here we can write number of students. Um, choosing a color. So some constants. Um, reading through this, right, they're all kindergartners. I think if you start getting into high school, some people might be a little creeped out by the colored potatoes. Um, so she used all kindergartners. Probably the same size scoop. I tell you what, she starts offering larger scoops for one of the colors. I'm going to be picking that one. So she's going to give the same size scoop. Um, same teacher is giving them out, right? Picture if uh, if your favorite teacher like me was giving out potatoes, that's probably the color you're going to choose over another one. So those are some examples of constants. So you got to think, okay, what else could affect these results? If something could, I need to make sure that that is held constant. Um, control group. Right in here, it says there were regular potatoes. So we can just simply say that our control group, because if I go back to the definition, control group, what you compare to are the normal. So in this case, that's just going to be regular potatoes. And there we go. We kind of broke down that experiment. So let's try another one here. Again, I'm going to ask that you pause the video, read through this, and then come back for the explanation. So here, 10 seeds were planted in each of five pots found in the house that contained 500 grams of peat's potting soil. The pots were given the following amounts of water each day for 40 days. Pot three was given the recommended amount of water for the given types of seeds. The height of each plant was measured at the end of the experiment. So independent variable, that is what is the researcher changing? Well, in this case, we can clearly see the data shows that they are changing the amount of water. What are they measuring a change in, our dependent variable? They are measuring a change in the plant height. So does changing the amount of water given affect the plant height? What are some constants? Again, I know constants can be challenging, but if we read through this, um, 10 seeds right away, so they use 10 seeds, right? If you put a different amount of seeds in, that could change how high the plants grow. Um, Ooh, they were all given 500 grams of soil. Because picture if you only put a little tiny bit of dirt in there, that's going to affect how high a plant grows. So you got to hold that constant. Um, water was not a constant because that was our independent variable. Um, height of each plant was recorded. So these are probably the only two that are really given to us in this problem. Um, you could probably argue that they use same... probably put them all in the same kind of pot because you know if you use a small pot versus a larger pot that could affect the results and then the control group is a tough one here but in this case it says pot three was given the recommended amount of water 
Well, that's going to be our control group. That's what we're going to compare to. So control group is going to be pot number three. Okay, coming down to experiment number three. Um, again, pause the video, try these out, fast forward, see if you got them correct. If not, come back and listen to this explanation. So question three, Esther became interested in insulation. That's going to be the stuff up in your attic that um, helps trap heat. Um, so insulation while her parents' new house is being built. She decided to determine which insulation transferred the least heat. So she filled six jars half full of water. She sealed each jar with plastic, then wrapped five jars with a different type of insulation. The last jar remained unwrapped. Um, she then put the jars outside in direct sunlight. Later, Esther measured the temperature of water in each jar. So our independent variable in this case, that is, what is it that she is changing? Well, in this case, she is changing the type of insulation. What is she measuring it for a change in? She is measuring or recording the temperature. What are some constants that she used here? So we can assume that she's using same type of jar. Um, sounds like they were all in sunlight. We'll assume that they could all get full sunlight the entire time. Um, they were all half filled with water. Let's see, anything else in there? No, I think that's probably about right for all of them. And then our control group, that is to basically see, you know, the effect that insulation has, it actually says that the last jar remained unwrapped. So this would basically be if, okay, what if our house put no insulation? So she's testing the effectiveness of insulation. So in this case, your control group, that is your normal or what you're gonna to compare to is the unwrapped jar. So the jar with no insulation. All right, and last experiment. Again, I would pause, try the video on your own, but let's go through this. So Mike observed that different kinds and amounts of fossils were present in a cliff behind his house. He wondered why changes in fossil content occurred at the top, um, at top to the bottom of the bank. He marked the back at five positions, five, 10, 15, 20, and 25 meters from the surface. Mike removed a bucket of soil from each of the positions and determined the kind and number of fossils in each. So independent variable in this case, that is, what is it that the researcher is changing? Well, looks like he's changing the distance. He measured these distances out before he did anything. So his independent variable is actually going to be the distance. Then what he's recording now based on that um, is the number of fossils in each. So the number of fossils that he collects at these different distances. Constants in this case, um, it says a bucket of soil. So is that a perfect constant? Probably not, right? A bucket's not super accurate, but we'll go with that as a constant right now. And that really might be about the only constant really given in this experiment. So. I think we'll probably just stick with that as our only constant. And then if you remember back to our directions here, it said, please note, one of the experiments will not have a control group. So there we go. This last experiment does not have a control group. So we're just gonna write on here, none. Hope you found this video explanation helpful. Um, as always, reach out if you have questions and thanks for learning.